that there's a relationship between snoring and heart disease, that's something that's beneficial to do is to continue to see which group has the higher rate of heart disease. So is snoring protective against heart disease or does it increase your risk for heart disease? So what we're going to do now is to try to figure out which group has a higher rate. So who has a higher rate of heart disease is a valuable question because right now all we know is that there's a relationship between disease and snoring. So to be able to calculate this, we first need to figure out the proportion of snorers with heart disease versus the proportion of non-snorers with heart disease. So for these problems, I am interested in a success. Yes, they have heart disease. So I'm going to calculate what's called p hat sub 1. So my proportion of snorers who have heart disease. So I have 86 successes, 86 people who said yes, they have heart disease, out of a total number of snorers, 1,105. So that gives me a p hat value of 0.0778. So that's the proportion of snorers from our sample who have heart disease. Then to calculate my second proportion of interest, again, I'm still interested in the success of saying that they have heart disease. So 24 is my numerator, that's my x or number of successes, divided by the total number of non-snorers in my sample, so that's 1379, and I come up with a p hat sub 2 equal to 0 0.0174. So now we're going to be comparing these two proportions in a confidence interval to be able to figure out who has the higher rate of heart disease. Also define that parameter definition. And to do that, I am going to write P, that's the notation for parameter, sub 1 equals, and this would be proportion, and then we would state our population. So this is going to be snorers. And then our success. So here it would be with heart disease. And for brevity's sake, I'll just shorten it to H period, D period. P sub 2 equals the proportion of, and my population is going to be non-snorers and again my success would be with heart disease and again for brevity's sake we'll just shorten it to h period d period so now when we look at the formula for the confidence interval what you'll notice is that i'm taking p hat sub one i'm subtracting p hat sub two plus or minus, and the 1.96 is the multiplier for 95%. So that would be our confidence level. So that's our Z star. And then we're multiplying that by standard error. So the resulting confidence interval ranges from 0 0.043 to 0 0.078. I am interpreting it the same way that I have been interpreting confidence intervals in the past. We're stating how confident we are, our parameter definition, as well as the interval. But now because we're comparing two groups, instead of the interval going at the end, it goes in the middle so that we can compare the two. So then I would state the proportion or the parameter definition that comes first, and we had defined P sub 1 as being proportion of snores with heart disease is between, then I would state my interval, and then the second parameter that I defined, which is proportion of non snores with heart disease. So because this interval does not include zero, meaning it doesn't range from a negative value up to a positive value, there is in fact a difference in these two proportions. And what we can see here is that actually the snoring is increasing a person's risk for developing heart disease. 
So this is something that you can further the information that you created or found from a chi-squared hypothesis test where you can see which group has a higher rate here of heart disease or just in general maybe middle ear infections or cancer whatever it is you're looking for you have the opportunity to see who has higher rates using the difference in two population proportions.